a people without books, pens, and classrooms. Now that describes the pre-colonial state of the nation now known as Nigeria. Formal education was one of the fallouts of the Lord Lugard-led colonial administration with the bunch of Tafawa Balewa, Obafemiya Wolowo, and Nnamdi Azikiwe to show for it. Nigeria's professor of political economy, Professor Patotomi, born in the pre-independence era, x-rays what education in the 1960s was like. Back in those days, uh, education was such worth such value that it was a joint project between the state, the uh, missionaries or PDAs as they're called, private development agencies, which include communities um, and the private sector. He points out that education in the early post-independence era was nothing short of standard education as the nationalists endeavoured to invest in qualitative education which brought about great impact on the nation. The Ashby Commission on Higher Education in Nigeria actually dared to suggest that in 1960-61, the quality of higher education in Nigeria was as good as the very best in the world. According to some academics, schools at that time were well-funded with the universities enjoying quality and basic infrastructure as students were motivated by the government to study. It was very competitive. And when you receive the kind of quality of education through the public school system, you could, you know, hold your own anywhere. Um, and so competitively, a Nigerian... Um, graduates at different levels of education uh, were beating their peers in, uh, say, the Commonwealth uh, co competition, academic competitions or scholarships. Few universities, such as the University of Ibadan, established in 1948, the University of Nigeria, Nsuka, established in 1960, the Amadebele University, Zaria, set up in 1962, the Abafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, established in 1962, and the University of Lagos, set up in 1962, were all established in the earliest post-colonial era. With the rise in a number of academic institutions, both in the primary, secondary and universities, experts say that one constant challenge that the educational system seemed to have suffered over the years is the decline in qualitative education in the country. Now, what has happened is that from 1960 till date, we have refused to evolve with the changing times. Um, Nigeria has refused to make adjustments, either a uh, uh, concept of what a curriculum means or the design of how learning takes place. People just start school without knowing the reason, you understand? And nobody at any point deems it fit to actually explain to them, this is why you're going to school, you understand? Helping the child also to like be himself. Sometimes you see children resenting learning, and it is simply because with the way the world is developing technologically, in most cases, our educational system has not been able to align with that pace. So some children find learning uninteresting. They do it as a necessary evil. If we invest much more in our public school system and make our public schools much better, much more attractive, we will not have the proliferation we have today of uh, private universities and private secondary schools. Um, so, you know, but many of these private schools, they are actually the only hope for many families for a decent education for their children. So focus on university education. That's the biggest problem of our country. Well, let's talk about university education. When primary education is more important, secondary education, very, very important. And so we end up looking at tertiary education because it has more pizzazz. Whereas those other levels, are the base. Garbage comes from them, garbage goes into universities, and garbage comes out. Another thing that um, hasn't that we haven't done well with is that we actually have many more children left behind. Uh, the school system, Nigeria today, has about 13.8 million uh, children thereabout who are of school age who are not in school. 
um, at the at the uh, primary level. The secondary level is even you know worse in terms of the ratio of ones that should be in, in the school system that are not in the secondary school system because between uh, primary school, uh, basic school, and sec secondary school, there there are many that drop off. So there's no poor completion rate. Uh, so we have people, children who are being left behind. The challenge is the people who are saddled with the responsibility of creating systems and structures to drive educational development are either not ready, either not having the political will, or some other factors that we really cannot understand. But it needs um, political will and drive to adjust system and structures. What we're doing wrong is that we're not evolving for the changing times. For our education to work, we need a strategy. And that strategy got, got to take into account how much resources go there, how people pay or are supported in the process. You cannot say that uh, university education is free. You don't pay and you don't have the money. Obviously, you're going to create a zoo. My thought has always been that you can break the system down. Let's, let's face it. Every country needs centers of excellence. In its top universities of excellence, you will pay fees of significant amounts and government will supply, subvent significantly. The reissue of poor teacher quality has also lingered for the last six decades. Dedicated teachers, biggest need in education is teacher quality. We don't have teacher quality, right? You know, in the good old days before independence and, you know, education has to be very strongly regulated. You have to have an inspectorate of schools that is active and doing its job. Education pre-independence was high. You realize that we had Chinese teachers, we had Indian teachers back then. And then when we moved into the independence era, we had Ghanaian teachers. Um, in fact, one of the qualities of saying that you had a good school was not the physical structure, was the quality of teachers. But now we're moving to the era where we're now working with theatrics. We're looking at the facilities, we're looking at the ambience, we're looking at um, the school buses, the ACs in the classroom. We moved from major things, right, that made a difference. We now started talking about theatrics, things that we look and feel. And that's when we miss the purpose of education. We can use technology to support teacher quality extended um, media, um, remote location of excellent teachers can do a lot more than a, you know, a big crowd of poly trained, poly paid teachers running around adding very little value to the lives of those kids. Other stakeholders explain that while there has been a fall in the standard of education across the country, the nation's educational institutions haven't done so badly. And so when we begin to look at 60 years down the line, the truth of the matter is it's a tale of bitter, sweet experience. Uh, because at, in the midst of this quagmire, uh, we've still found out that there are some pockets of um, schools and some pockets of educationists, some pockets of professionals who are blazing the trail. Notable names, I mean, around the world, have made exploits in science, technology, arts, literature, coming from the Nigerian educational system. We literally are a society filled with solid human capital depth in every place and in every face. Some of the best professionals, education-wise, are in Nigerian universities, in our Department of Education, people who write papers, and those papers are used in international quarters, are right here in Nigeria. The problem is not with human capital or professionals. Also, I need to pull that out there. The challenge is the people who are saddled with the responsibility of creating systems and structures to drive educational development are either not ready, either not having the political will, or some other factors that we really cannot understand. Each year, Nigeria witnesses an increase in the number of Nigerian students traveling abroad to study. In 2018 alone, at least a total of 332,727 students left the shores of the country to acquire foreign education, a phenomenon which some experts have constantly condemned as detrimental to the GDP of the nation. 
Um, so we've not really valued our own education. So what happens is we reward more times people who go out and come back. And so most people are looking at that model that it seems like that's what works. It's all about uh, people finding out that um, if I go to school abroad, I seem to have some form of respect. Uh, when people see that I school outside this country, people have people have equated quality of learning with the countries in which you're schooling. So I can read mass communication in Nigeria and I go abroad and read mass communication. I will not be given the same leverage because there's just this thing that the quality of learning abroad is better than the quality of learning here. As the mouth of giant of Africa celebrates 60 years of independence as a nation, there is a call for all hands to be on deck to grow the educational sector if it must change its narrative as the poverty capital of the world. Mary Chinda reporting for Plus TV Africa.